Number one, customer. I hear a lot of scary shopping stories, and they are usually from the perspective of the person who is shopping. However, my scariest experience happened when I was working at a bookstore. About two months after I was promoted from bookseller to assistant manager, we were hit by the Christmas rush. It was always so overwhelming, really. By the end of the night, everyone was so wiped out. And getting all the receipts and drawers counted at the end of the night took so much time. On the nights that I was closing, I let the workers go as soon as they were done. There was no reason to make them stick around and be tired while I was finishing up my work. After I let everyone go, I went back in the office to do my work. After a while, I heard the doorbell ring. We had security cameras, but there wasn't one outside the front door. So, I had to go to the front door and see who it was. There was a guy there, and he was dressed in dark clothes, and he had his hood up. I asked him how I could help him, of course, watching him through the door. Hey, dude, I left my wallet in your store, he told me. Can you open the door and let me come in and get it? I asked him where he thought he left it, and that I would look for it for him. He didn't like that idea, and told me he wasn't sure. He had been shopping through the entire store, and would have to look for it. I asked him if he had bought anything, and he told me yes, which meant he had to have his wallet on him at that point. I pointed that out to him, and he seemed taken back a bit. I told him we didn't get anything turned in, but I could take his information and get back to him if we find anything. The man began getting angry, telling me that he needed his wallet tonight, and he couldn't wait for me to look for it. He kept insisting that I let him in so he could look for it. When I told him, that there was no way I was letting him in the store this late, and while I was alone, he began getting visibly angry. He told me that if I didn't let him in the place right away, he would call the police and tell them that I stole his wallet. He even got his cell phone out of his pocket and acted like he was going to call. At that point, I had enough. I told the guy the best thing I could do for him is take his information and call him if anything was found. I then told him that if this wasn't good enough, then there wasn't anything at all that I could do for him. He got really angry and began swearing at me. He grabbed the door and began shaking it, demanding that I open the door. I told him I was going to walk over to the customer service desk and call the police. I wasn't willing to cooperate anymore. As I made my way over there, I noticed the guy take off down the street. I thought that was the end of him, and I figured that I didn't really need to bother the police for this. I went back to my work and tried my best to get it done, so I could go home and get some rest. It took me about two hours to honestly finish all of my paperwork. I hadn't heard the doorbell ring, and pretty much figured that I wouldn't be seeing that guy again. However, when I was going to the front of the store, I did look around to see if anyone was in the parking lot before I went outside. I went out to my car in the cold, and couldn't wait to get out of the cold. However, I froze, when I was maybe within a couple feet away from my car there was someone in the back seat of my car. He was hiding, down on the back seat with his hood over his head, but there was definitely someone in the back seat of my car, and I knew exactly who it had to be. Furthermore, he must have seen me or he wouldn't have ducked down. I did the only thing I could think of to do. I turned and ran at full speed back to the store. I didn't look back around until I had made it to the door. And yeah, he was coming at me. I unlocked the door and shut it behind me. 
he made it to the door right before I could lock it, so I had to do my best to hold it closed, while trying to turn the lock. As I did, the man screamed all sorts of obscenities at me, telling me he was going to kill me. As the door opened outward, I quickly pushed it towards him, knocking him on the ground. Before he could realize what had happened and recover, I was able to get the door closed and locked. This time, I immediately called the police. The guy left after the door was locked, but the police picked him up pretty quickly. Number 2. Shopping at Home I really wanted a PlayStation 4 when it was originally released. I tried everything to get one as quickly as possible. The local Best Buy was having a Black Friday sale, and I stood in line, waiting to get one. I was nowhere near being lucky enough to actually get one in this method. I then tried getting one online. As much as I wanted one, the people on eBay and Amazon who were reselling them were asking way too much money and I couldn't afford them. After several days of trying my best to find a way to get one, I had to come to the conclusion that it wasn't going to happen. It was then that I thought I came across a bit of luck. Going through Craigslist, I found that someone was selling their PlayStation 4, and at no more than the original buying price of the system. I of course was skeptical. I couldn't understand why they would do that. Also, I figured as in demand as the system happened to be, that someone would have claimed it right away. I immediately emailed the seller and let them know that I was very interested and hoped that they still had it. I was surprised to get an immediate response that they did still have the PS4 and would be willing to sell it to me. They asked for my address so they could bring it over. I was sort of hesitant, and asked if it would be better to meet in public. I wasn't too keen on the idea of someone coming over to my house. He let me know that he was going to be very busy all day, and that he couldn't keep an appointment in public. It would be much better if he came over to my house. I was still not really ecstatic about the idea, but I really wanted that PS4. I agreed, and gave the guy my address. I figured it was safer than me going over to his place. This whole exchange took place about 9am. I was so happy and really eager to get my PS4. My eagerness only grew as I began waiting for the guy to show up. Hell, I not only began waiting for him, I waited for him for a long time. Hours passed by and I began to think that he wasn't going to come. Around 2 p.m., I had gotten really impatient. I tried emailing the guy back, asking him where he was. Previously, I had gotten very quick responses from him, but I didn't get any this time. Around 6 p.m., I had lost all hope. I figured that most likely, he got a better offer from someone else and didn't want to tell me. I was disappointed, more than I could possibly even tell you. I couldn't even tell you how deflated I was. It's one thing to not have gotten the item from the store. I could come to terms with that. But I was so close to having one in my hands and I didn't get the PS4. And that was the scariest thing to ever happen to me. Just kidding. For the rest of the night, I kept looking around on Craigslist to find a new PS4 that was within my price range. I wasn't able to find anything, and before I knew it, I had wasted the entire day and the entire evening with this search. It was past midnight, and I just had nothing to show for the day. I got ready for bed, and that was when I heard something. At first, I dismissed it thinking that it was my imagination. And then I heard it again, and someone was knocking at my door. 
I walked up to the door and looked out the window. There was a guy standing there, and I asked who he was. He identified himself as a guy who had the PS4. He apologized for being so late, and told me he had got caught up during the day. He asked if I had the money. I opened the door, but kept the screen door closed. I told him I had the money, but I didn't see that he had anything with him. I asked if he brought the PS4 with him. He told me it was out in his van. He told me to get the money and come out to the van with him and he would get it for me. I let him know I wasn't really comfortable walking out to his van and he told me it was alright. I looked over his shoulder and saw that someone was in the van waiting and he had been keeping his hand in his hooded sweatshirt all the time while talking to me. There was something more than just his hand in there. I told him I'd go get my wallet and then come back. He protested as I closed the door in his face and then I locked it. I was too uncomfortable with this and I went over to my phone to call the cops. As I did, I heard a very loud hit on my front door. Then after a few moments, I watched the van drive away really fast. When I went to check and see if he damaged my door, I nearly fainted as I saw a knife embedded into the door itself. I was right that he had something in his sweatshirt and that I shouldn't go out to the van with him. Number 3. Black Friday Normally, I don't go out Christmas shopping on Black Friday. I know there are deals to be gotten, but the actual amount of people who get them is pretty low. It sometimes seems that more negativity comes out of it than anything. I did go out on Black Friday once, and honestly, the experience kept me from ever even considering doing it again. This was a few years back. The big Christmas gift that year was a game called Uno Attack. It was supposed to sell out pretty quickly, and my nephew really wanted one. So I decided for the first time ever to brave the Black Friday crowd and see about getting one. I waited outside the store in line for it to open. The entire time I kept wondering why people were so fanatical about doing this. It was cold, and although I was reasonably bundled up, it didn't help that I had to spend so much time not moving. In addition, people were in terrible spirits, which seemed to take the spirit away from the event. Some people would try to cut in line, which only made the people already in line crabbier than they already were. When the store was getting closer to opening, I noticed that there was someone from the store headed out and talking to each person in line. When they got to me, I realized he was handing out tickets, indicating who would be able to buy an Uno attack game. He asked me if that was why I was there, and I told him yes. He told me I was lucky, because I was getting the very last ticket. Of course, this caused some groaning and swearing from the people behind me. Although, I hated the idea that there would be a lot of children who wouldn't be getting the toy they wanted, I was elated. And that was until this guy got out of line and walked up to me. He came up immediately after the worker left. He first offered to buy the ticket from me. I told him no because it wasn't a matter of money, it was me trying to make my nephew happy. He then started telling me that his son really wanted the toy. I countered with letting him know that my nephew also really wanted the toy. When I kept refusing, he started telling me other stories, such as his son was really sick. But I could tell he was just doing his best to make me feel guilty. From further back in the line, a few other people began telling the guy to leave me alone. 
He got into a shouting match with several of them. Eventually the guy stomped away, but not before telling me, I'll get that toy. I tried not to think about it. I went in, claimed the Uno game, and did some more shopping. I figured that since I had spent so much time outside waiting, that I should try and get as much done as I could. When I was done in that store, I went back out to my car. I put all the toys in the trunk, and then I walked over to the bookstore in the strip mall in order to get some other items. When I began walking back to the car the second time, I paused when I noticed the man from earlier was leaning on my car. I began feeling tense, knowing that he was going to try to confront me again. He was much bigger than I was, but I decided I couldn't let him intimidate me. As I got closer to my car, he noticed me and smiled. He reached into his pocket, and I assumed he was reaching for his wallet. But it only took a moment before I saw that it was a pocket knife, and he flipped it open. I immediately stopped. I couldn't imagine the guy would be so stupid to try and threaten or stab me in a busy parking lot. But I didn't want to test that theory, so I turned and quickly ran back into the store that I had bought the Uno game in. I let the store security know what happened, and they gave me an escort out to the car. The man was gone, but I was still shaken. I was more shaken when I noticed knife marks on the lock for my trunk, and the trunk was dented. There were also deep scratches in my driver's side window. I never went out on Black Friday again. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. I hope these stories may not keep you from going Christmas shopping. Just remember that you can always buy on Amazon, and the buyers probably, probably won't show up at your door. These were originally going to be Black Friday stories, but I was pretty exhausted by the end of the Thanksgiving video, so I knew there was no way I would be able to get anything out on Friday. Now, if you want to see print versions of these stories, visit the Killer Orange Cat subreddit, where they have already been posted. Also, you can visit my sister's Killer Orange Cat merchandise store. She has an awesome Christmas sweater up right now, the links to both of these are in the description. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, or the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Feel free to leave a comment to let me know what you think of the video, and consider sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it. You can follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter, by using the links in the description. If you have a story you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, email it to the address included in the description. My only requirement is that the story is original, meaning it has not been read on any other YouTube channel. In the meantime, please don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed, because you never know where a Killer Orange Cat might be hiding. Good night.